I think there's always something to be said about coaches who have had success in multiple different scenarios, different schools, different uh, levels across extended periods of time. And you've definitely done that, you know, not just with your time at Vanderbilt, but before that at Clemson in the assistant role and then at Presbyterian before that. I'm curious, you know, how has coaching changed in the time that you've been involved as a coach? And, you know, are there certain key coaching principles that maybe are timeless and consistent across any situation, any level, any era in which you have coached? Well, yeah, I mean, there's certainly been changes. Uh, I've been, what, 38, 39 years now, and I'm a, I'm a 60s kid. I was born in the 60s, so my perspective, whether it's right or wrong, was kind of shaped by that, you know, just years of watching 60 athletes, 70 athletes, and, and moving forward. I, I think the areas of change today are, are probably the – the kids probably carry more luggage with them when they come into your program. Uh, I think in, in today's athlete, they, they certainly, uh, they, they look better than any athlete we've ever seen, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, I don't think it matters what the sport is, but I think in their development, they probably secured more coaches, more teachers. Um, in, in some ways, their parents have spent more resources to help them. And I would say because of that, there, there's probably a little bit more expectation for them, which creates a lot of different scenarios. It, it certainly creates some stress for the athlete, some pressure. Um, and I think because of that, too, the, the kids are starting to specialize a little bit more than than they did when, um, you know, I was growing up. Um, that's not the case with every athlete, but certainly the case a little bit more. So it's a little bit more individualized. So I, I think that that's different for sure. I think there's more specialization and I think the parents are involved in their lives a little bit more, which I think, as you see, uh, it, it becomes tougher and tougher with, with kids to get in team environments and, and just let themselves go a little bit more. I think the things that are, that are consistent, at least for me is, Kids will always need uh, discipline and, and structure and organization, Eric. I, I don't think that will ever change, and it won't change in our program. I think uh, along the way, I've tried to create uh, an environment where the kids can, you be, we become more of the facilitators, and they take ownership of the environment to try to make it fun. But I, I think the team environment, playing the game for others outside of yourself, um, not enabling kids, uh, not showcasing, learning how to compete, not auditioning, just getting an environment and just keeping it raw and keeping it real. And there's, a, I would say, more of a, a playground feeling to what we're doing on the field than just a, a scientific methodology for creating a baseball team. I think that's probably why I've gone to more classroom uh, environment prior to getting on the field. And then when the kids get on the field, it really becomes theirs. So I, I think that's, that's the consistent piece, just the, the discipline because the kids won't ask for it, but they want it. And, uh, I think discipline creates, and it's been said in a lot of different ways, a lot of freedom for these kids, if they can find themselves organized before they get to the environment. I love that. And I'm actually interested is, you know, the, the average athlete that you get on day one, is it markedly different now than it was, you know, say eight, 10 years ago? I, you know, obviously we refer to early sports specialization and with that comes, mm -hmm. you know, more funky elbows and more previous ACL operations and things like that. Are you getting kids that, you know, maybe aren't even uh, necessarily just more injured, but also is it a, a scenario where there's, there's, there's fewer fundamentals, you know, there's more showcasing in high school ball as opposed to true developmental opportunities. Like, is it basics and putting guys back together more often than you would have thought? Yeah, I would say for sure. I, I would say that the, the the skill development, the talent might be more, mm -hmm. uh, the strength, um, the ability to, to hit a ball hard and further, uh, the be, the ability to, to throw a ball further and harder. All of those things are greater than we've ever seen. But how to take those resources and implement them into a team environment and play a game is less. Uh, I think that has probably much to do with 
you know, and all of this too, Eric, it's not, it's not these kids fault. I mean, it's the environment around us. Actually the fault comes from, if it's fault, I don't, that might not be the word either, but it's the adults ourselves, whether it's parents, coaches, and teachers, we create these environments for these kids to grow up into. So that, that playground mentality of, of just uh, being able to, to do things with other kids and then just enjoy environments. You look at it this way. If you went to an elementary school and which which parents wouldn't once they drop their child off they just trust the teachers to to run the environment but during during the day there's uh there's an, a period where the kids uh, attack the playground and there's not parents out there watching and you can see that there's a sense of enjoyment because kids are not strapped by anything they're not trying to trying to impress you get to environments where at least in a in a in the, at the youthful levels where there's more parents and there's more attention in those settings, those smiles drop quite a bit. And it's probably because kids are carrying around luggage on both hands. And it, they, it, that takes a lot of resource too, just to, to try to enjoy the environments they're in. So I think that part has, has certainly found its way in, into these environments today. Um, but I, I would say that that's probably the area of why kids have, have changed so much because there is so special, so much specialization and because kids oftentimes find themselves doing it for others outside of themselves. I think when kids and when parents and teachers can teach, teach themselves how to release the opportunity to the kids, it becomes more of the kids and then it becomes more of the team. And when it becomes more of the team, there's a greater emotion that's involved in the experience. And uh, I think that's that's the area that we we probably must improve the most.